Hey everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today we're going to be taking a break from the dungeon a little bit because I wanted to create a monster. Um, I think it's pronounced over here. Not too sure. If you want to correct me, feel free to in the comments below, but I'm just going to be calling it over here because that's what I was finding online. Other than that, um, I thought it'd be cool to try and do a monster today. So to get started, I do have my scene set to inches to be working with in the scale of my grid floor is set to quarter of an inch. And I will also be starting with our default cube. I already renamed it, but of course feel free to work with whatever you feel comfortable in. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be working inches. Now the Bahir is a monstrous creature. So in the D&D &D book, uh, it says it's about 40 feet or from what I looked up, it said it was about 40 feet. So we'll probably be making this so it's about eight inches. So for this default cube, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and size it down to about uh, around a quarter of an inch, not precise, just loosely around that. So that way we can get started with this build off of it and then resize it again once we are totally finished. So we'll just start with approximately that size and go from there. Next, uh, I am going to bring in a reference image. I'm not going to be modeling off of it totally. So I'm probably just going to push it off to the side, but I'm just going to go ahead and check this background image box. Go ahead and hit add image open and I just have it saved to my desktop and if we just go into a camera view we can see this is the actual one from the D&D &D book so I'm just gonna size it down it's not the best quality image it's more for just a general reference um, just in case we want to go ahead and take a look at it as we're going through uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and size it down to about that eight inches so we can get that kind of that general size anyway. Uh, and then I'm just gonna push it to the side because I don't really want to look at it too, too much. And if I got the three, perfect, okay. So I'm just gonna minimize that. And with that all set up, we'll just go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm gonna do control R and add a whole loop. i just focus it on, on it real quick. A to deselect everything, Z for wireframe view. B for border select, and just go ahead and X to delete those vertices. Then what I wanna do is just go ahead, go over to our wrench modifier tab and do a mirror modifier and apply clipping. Just get it started right away. Um, and actually I'm gonna go ahead and also add a subdivision surface modifier right away as well. Now I like to crank this up to three personal preference, but I always find three to be pretty nice or what I'm 3D printing. So basically what we're doing right now is setting up the torso. So if we zoom out, we are going to be creating a section of the torso with the leg coming out. And then what we can do is do an array modifier to extrude the tail out. So that's why we're starting with such a smaller cube. Um, and then we can size it up as we go along, which do you want to go ahead and just size up a little bit? No. Which we'll go ahead and with that being said, we just want to go ahead and delete these two faces. So I'm just going to hit X and delete those. So that way we get that torso section started. Now I'm going to grab this face on the side and just hit E to extrude and right click out of it and just size it down slightly so we can get our arm started as well so, or leg. So we'll go ahead and do E to extrude. And I'm just gonna pull that out as well to kind of have that there. Now, it's still, because we're extruding out on the side, it kind of starts to make the top and bottom a little flat. So what I wanna do is just go ahead and grab these two edges, hit S and Z and bring them up to make sure it stays a little bit more circular. Now, since it is kind of a larger lizard, it you know could be a little bit more flat on the bottom. Um, things like that, but he does look pretty round, so I'd like to try and keep it that way. So I'm just going to bring that out just a little bit more, and we're also going to do a control R and bring this out horizontally like that. Oh my god. And we're just going to drag this out, the whole thing, so even this leg part. Maybe not quite that far to keep up our circular shape. Okay. Now, if we go to the side, you'll notice our leg is looking a little square. So what we're gonna do 
are going to add a loop vertically this way. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the four like, corners, essentially. I'm going to deselect these ones, though, and then hit S, Shift, X. So that way it sizes in every direction except for the X. And pull that in to round it. Oops. Round it out a little bit. Like that. Okay. So now that we have that set up, I'm just going to go ahead and deselect that. Now you'll notice with the Bahir, he kind of has some larger wrinkles around his uh, shoulder or leg joint, whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, so I want to go ahead and make sure we add that in. I'm going to go ahead and add a loop in here. I'm going to go ahead and add a loop here as well. And with that one selected, we'll go ahead and drag it out a little bit, maybe size it up. And I'm going to go ahead, so that way we have some more to play with. I'm going to go ahead and grab this edge here, do E to extrude and just pull it out slightly. And then this one, I'm going to do E to extrude, go into side view and pull this out to about here. So three quarters of the way through this grid square approximately, because with the here, he does have a longer torso section in between each leg. So actually we probably could just go ahead and bring that all the way back. Perfect. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead to start kind of pushing and pulling our vertices a little bit to make sure it's looking good um, and not too boxy. You know, you don't want it to look too boxy. Now for the inset, we're going to go ahead and just do shift E to sharpen it. We're not going to go all the way, just slightly to bring it back. So it gets a better crease there um, to get our skin fold even more. And actually I might even do another one here and size that out as well to give it even more just good. Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the corners though. Just like we did before. And then just deselect these outer ones. S, Shift X, and draw them in to make it more circular again. Awesome. Okay, so now. Go ahead and reselect this whole part of the leg. We're going to drag that out some more and actually going to drag it down a little bit to start getting it to slope. And I'm going to, going to go ahead and do SX zero to flatten that out. Rotate it a little bit to start that. And then we can get our knee shaped. So we can do E to extrude, grab that, pull it out and down. Rotate it more, probably something like that. Maybe even size it down just a smidge. E to extrude, grab that out, rotate it a lot, size it down. E to extrude and pull that down, oops, rotate that, get it as flat as you can. And just to make sure you can do S Z zero to make sure it is completely flat. And I'm just going to drag that out a little bit too. Okay. So that is where approximately where we're going to have our ankle be. So we'll just leave that for now and add the foot in a, a little bit later. So we can start shaping out the leg a bit more. So for the upper part, with the knee. I want to bring this up and forward and I'm going to add a loop here so we can shape out the knee even more, make it look a little bit more defined. And then I'm going to grab these two vertices on the back and size them out from each other to get that larger kind of calf muscle that they have for it. And we're also going to drag these two back along the X. 
Maybe pull this one back in a little bit more to get a little bit more of a smoother transition there. Get that pretty defined. I'm gonna size this out. Size these in a little bit. And I wouldn't mind this part coming down a little more. So I'm just gonna go into front view and then rotate a little bit so we can grab these guys right here and drag that down to make it more dramatic on the bottom. And of course you guys can always go back and add in more wrinkles on the torso, but I wouldn't mind adding some wrinkles on the actual leg as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and you can scroll up to add multiple loops, but I'm just gonna do them one at a time so I can put them where I want them to be. So I'm just gonna do S instead of them uh, being kind of like varied and whatnot. I'm also gonna do SX zero to kind of like smooth it out a little bit for some things. SX and I'm not gonna hit zero for this one so it's a little bit more of a better transition. Control R, bring this back. Size this out a little bit, just add a little divot. A wrinkle, however you want to phrase it. Set that one out. Some of these might not even be too drastic of a change for the printer to really recognize, but it'll still be a nicer model. So we wanna make sure we pay attention to that as well. Um, for Okay, so for now that's not too bad. I wouldn't mind bringing the knee out a little bit more. be more like that a little bit more defined and then we can bring this down so it kind of has like that ridge for the kneecap okay so next for the foot to start building that it's gonna deselect everything go into wireframe view again grab this whole loop down here and we'll just do E to extrude we're just gonna drag that down along the Z to match our grid line down here. And actually this is a little bit too large. I'm gonna bring this down. So we're at about, you know, a quarter of an inch roughly. You could make it a little larger if you want. But for our toes, you'll notice they have kind of a shorter one on the inside and then kind of like the middle with the largest one on the end. So we'll kind of consider like, this is kind of our thumb towards the inside and then they get bigger as they go out. So we'll wanna pay attention to that. And then they're also flared out pretty well as well. So with that in mind, you'll kind of be able to look at your topology and place out where you think the toes would be coming out. So I'm gonna to switch to face select. So we'll probably end up doing this one for our thumb piece. So I'm just gonna go into top view, drag that out. This one will be our center one. So go to top view again, hit E to extrude, just drag that out. We're gonna make that one longer. And this one for our biggest toe. So we'll do that. And I wouldn't mind rotating and grabbing that. So they're a little bit closer together because they don't need to be super flared out with them. We're like this. And then I can flatten that a little bit. So that way that one's looking a little thicker. We can size this one down some, but that's actually probably pretty good. And then we'll want to grab these two and probably pull them forward like this a little bit. Size along the Y to flatten it slightly. And I might even grab this center one, pull it along the X, 
and pull this up along the Y. That's looking good. Switch back to face select and for the length of the toes, this one's not too bad. I'm just gonna pull it along the X a little bit longer. This one I definitely want a little longer. And we'll do that and that one. Now to get a curve in the toes, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a loop in the center and we'll go ahead and bring that up for each of them to make them a little bit more claw-like. And then I'm gonna switch to vertex select mode so we can round them out a little bit better as well, make them a lot taller. Now there are claws on these or talons or, uh, so I'm just going to grab these two, hit E to extrude, size that in. I'm going to go into top view again, E to extrude and just pull it out from where it is. We're just going to size it down quite a bit. You drag it out some more. I'm going to go into front view, check it out. I'm going to add a loop so that way I can draw that up. And then we're going to drag this back down. And that's making a nicer talent shape, but it's pretty square. So what we we'll want to do again is drag these guys up to round that out on the top. And then we could even size these in a little bit if you want. And I would probably, I would probably recommend going back here oops, and sharpening that to make it a nice crease. Go ahead and grab these, do the same thing. We'll just size that in. Go into top view, E to extrude, pull it out. This one's gonna be a little larger. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that down for now, add our loop and pull that up. Oops. Get our vertex select back and draw those up to round that out again. I'm going to size this in. I wouldn't mind sizing these in as well. Let's make that more of a point. Yeah, that looks better. This one's pretty thick. I might size these in pretty good. Just going through, rounding it out like normal. Whoops, not that one. Make sure they still line up pretty good. There, that's looking better. Pretty thick talons. And we'll go ahead and add the one over here as well. E to extrude, size that in. Pull that out to match. E to extrude. Sharpen that, and we can start sizing this down. Let's 
Pull this back, make it a little bit flatter. There we go. And then it's just pretty uneven, so I want to go ahead oops, and pull this guy down. Kind of even it out a little bit. Looks a little funky for this toe though. Uh, I might need to adjust these a little bit more before I'm happy with it. Thinking, let's see. It's not too, too bad, but the legs are a lot larger than the torso right now. Um, so I'm thinking what I'll do is just size up the torso, I think would be the best since I do like the leg shape that we have going on, but our torso is too small. Um, yeah, it's just proportioned oddly. So we're going to go ahead and deselect that. And we'll go ahead, Z for wireframe view, border select our torso up here. But I don't want all of this extra arm stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure we select that. Or deselect that, sorry. And we'll just go ahead and size it up. But you'll notice that it definitely sizes along the Z more than the X. So whatever you do, make sure you do S and X as well to fix that. Awesome. Now we just wanna grab the reverse. So we're gonna grab our leg. So just deselect all of this stuff. And then we can re replace our leg. Yeah, like that. Which works out better because then we can fix any of our other like skin folds and things like that. So we can make these bigger. Maybe add another one here. Pull that out as well. It's looking really defined here. I'm probably gonna drag these out a little bit to kind of make it an easier transition. Yeah, so that way, it, yeah, it's a lot more gentle. Um, I'm thinking his cap isn't as dramatic as the picture though. I wouldn't mind dragging this out even more so because that is pretty defined in the picture. So I'm gonna size these as well. And I might even size these slightly too. I can keep going in and tweaking more and more of this as we go, but I think you guys get kind of the gist of it. So keep going in, adding more detail, um, I don't want this tutorial to take forever, so we'll just go ahead and leave it here. But of course, you guys can just pause the video, add in a lot more detail, make the toes look better, um, things like that. And maybe add some more skin folds down at the wrist, uh, like this, something like that. Anyway, um, I'm going to show you guys how to do the array modifier and finish off the torso. And then next week, we'll go ahead and do the head. So. For the rest of the torso, I'm just going to go ahead and tab out of edit mode. I'm going to duplicate this so that way I can go back and edit it and make it look better. But for now, we'll go ahead and just do the rest. So once you're happy, again, of course, you're more than welcome to duplicate it in case if you want to make sure everything's okay. I'm going to go ahead and apply both modifiers and then we'll go ahead and add an array. So kind of just like how we did the snake from before. Right now, it duplicated it to the right, which is not what we want. We'll go ahead and change this to zero, and we want it to do along, or want it to be along the Y axis. So we'll just go ahead and add one there. There's a gap, so we will have to fix that, but first I'm gonna go ahead and do merge and just crank the distance up. And then for the Bahir, he has one, two, three, four, five, six sets of legs. So we're just gonna turn this up to six. Whoops, not seven focus in on it, make sure everything looks good for now. Cool. And we want to go ahead and fix this gap. So 
inside view, I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to 0.9 and see how that looks. That's way too much. So what we'll do is keep adding that up. So let's go in the middle, 0.95, still not quite right. So we'll do, oops, 0.97, perfect. So once it lines up, that actually is awesome. If there's a little bit of a difference, that's where this part comes in handy. So that way it'll still merge your vertices, but you know, the closer you can get it, the better. So this one looks like it's basically right on there, which is awesome. So uh, it should merge properly. So I'm just gonna tab, or I'm sorry, get out of wireframe view. Make sure it still looks okay. There's a little bit of funkiness with our thing here. Oh, one thing that I forgot, um, in the picture, he kind of has these scales, ugh, which is kind of hard to see with this low quality image. Um, but if you look in the book, it's on page 25 of the monster manual. He kind of has some scale textures going on his back too. Feel free to go back and add those. I might do that afterward for, so that way it's there for next week's tutorial. But again, I'm just going to go ahead and get this set up and we'll add the tail real quick. Okay. So uh, after that is done, we'll just go ahead and apply our array modifier. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and just check it out real quick. So I'm just gonna go to a couple of these, make sure that there's no extra vertices or loops or anything and that it is actually connected, which it definitely seems like it is, which is awesome. So now for the last part, we want to add his tail, which we can do so pretty easily. I'm just going to go ahead. First off, I'm going to do proportional editing and do connected and drag this out. Just like that. So that way we don't have to start adding more loops yet. We might in a second, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and size this down. And it is getting a little bit of his back leg, but I'm not too concerned about it. Wouldn't mind this part starting to get a little bit um, smaller anyway. So now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and do E to extrude. Just right click to get out of it. Disable our proportional editing for now. And then size this down. E to extrude again. I'm just gonna do Alt M at center and just pull that out. Now it's pretty drastically sharp there. So what I wanna do is do another loop, drag it down, and we'll just go ahead and size this. We'll actually probably pull this back in So that way it's not as a dramatic cutoff for his tail. Making it rounder. Awesome, but that is the beginning of our Bahir. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. Um, but yeah, like I said, I wanna go ahead and tweak some of the little stuff before we do the head and kind of upper body portion during next week's tutorial and then we'll see if we can rig it in next week's tutorial but if the head takes too long i might make it another video we'll just have to see how long it is other than that again feel free to post any questions concerns critiques in the comments below um as well as requests for next time but of course uh, i do have my discord and other stuff down below but if you want the quickest responses you can always feel free to join in my discord and there is a blender help section so other than that thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you guys next week